Hey guys, how are you all doing? Manje Zamachisha Spaniala. I'm Mystical, and today I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. However, just before we jump into this one, a super quick piece of information about the second channel, the one that is auto-dubbed in English and the one that is originally in Polish, will be dubbed by me in English so that you don't have to listen to the crappy YouTube auto dub voice. But anyway, second video up on that channel where we uh, hack the Echo Dot. So in case that's something that interests you guys, how we manage to root the thing, get all of this animation stuff running with Home Assistant, do make sure to check that out down below. Okay, now with that out of the way, we've got some super interesting pieces of information today. Seven, to be specific, seven topics we're going to be talking about. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. First things first, the most interesting piece of information, the Steamworks documentation. As Valve has officially released the Steamworks, the developer documentation, for the uh, Steam frame. So let's begin with that. As if you look between the lines inside this documentation, it actually reveals uh, pretty much everything. Well, except for the price and the actual release date. <laughs> First off, the docs confirm, once and for all, that the headset runs SteamOS. It's not like we didn't know this already, but SteamOS is based on Arch Linux. So, this does go with the fact that you will have full access to Arch Linux and its desktop inside the Steam frame. More on that in a little bit. The second thing here is the Deckard confirmation. So, yeah, we've had leaks and rumors about Deckard for the longest time. I don't think we've had Valve actually mention the word Deckard inside their promotional footage or anything like that, but here we can actually see that word inside the documentation. So, Pac-Man, being the package manager for Arch Linux, sudo pacman s Deckard dash Mesa dash Android dash Debug. So in case there was still any doubt whatsoever about the codename for this headset being Deckard, uh, that's that's your proof. The third is the big one. We have full root access. Again, this is Linux, so I'd be surprised if we didn't. That and Valve is moving along with their philosophy of essentially making all of their devices completely open. The docs list a command, sudo steamos-readonly disable. This means you can disable the read-only file system. You can have full root access. You can modify system files. You can also sudo pacman install any Arch Linux package. That does mean you should theoretically be able to install things like Discord, Spotify, and basically all the other things that we've been waiting years for to appear on other platforms. Here, you should just have access to that. That is, as long as those packages natively support Arch64. If they don't, well, uh, you're going to have to go through maybe some more painstaking process. Fourth, we've got Windows games via Proton. Again, this was a very big thing when we were talking about the Deckard, and something that a lot of people still don't get to this very day. This thing has a native desktop. It can run these titles. No, I'm not saying it can run them well. After all, this is a headset that still has a mobile CPU. It doesn't have a GPU like your typical desktop would, but it does have a Linux desktop, and it does have Proton, meaning that you can run them. How well? We're not entirely sure of that yet, but you bet that if it can run them, people are going to make mods in order to make them run well. Plus, if people are desperate enough, they will run Half-Life Alex even at 144p. Not that I'm saying it will run at 144p here, hopefully it will run higher, but we will see. This is all native, by the way. No computer, no wirelessly streaming from anything. Yes, that is apparently its primary purpose, but it doesn't need it in order to do this, which is why it's such a big deal. It's an open ecosystem, something we haven't had in a headset to date. We've all been on locked down Android with bootloader locking, no root access, no fun. Well, the fun starts now. And talking about fun, we've got Lepton, which is its Android compatibility layer that is native on the headset. As a matter of fact, the headset can apparently emulate an Android device if you plug it in via USB, allowing for USB debugging and sideloading of APK packages, which is pretty crazy. That is also pretty crazy. I don't know what that is. Th whose alarm sounds like that? This means that theoretically speaking, Someone might make some sort of compatibility layer in the future that will allow you to run Quest games on the Deckard. Now, this doesn't sound like it would be very, um, legal, so let's just err on the side of caution there and 
don't pirate games, obviously, but uh, hopefully it'll make it a lot easier for developers to be porting their games from Quest to the Deckard. So developers, uh, in my eyes, this is more for you than for anyone else. This isn't all, however, as the documentation actually goes quite deep. And it will obviously be down in the description for you in case you want to look through all the tabs. But to give you a little bit more, it gets even better for developers, or anyone who actually wants to sideload games. The documentation reveals how the SteamOS dev kit client actually works, and it basically confirms this is a universal soldier of headsets. When you upload a game, there is a drop down menu for the runtime. You can literally choose between Steam Linux runtime for native Linux games, Steam Play, which is Proton to run Windows EXE titles, or Android in case you want to install APK files. You don't need different emulators or any weird ways of installing them. The headset just handles the three natively. We also get a major clue about the power of this thing. The setup guide states that the headset requires a minimum of 27 watts to charge while playing, but they recommend a 45 watt adapter. For context, a Quest 3 usually draws much less power. And finally, we've got remote desktop. Valve isn't hiding the desktop here. The docs even explain how you can use XRDP to remote into the headset. Yes, you can actually remote into the headset instead of remoting into your computer from the headset. How crazy is that? The default username is SteamOS and the password is Frame. It's a PC on your face. This is why I'm so unbelievably excited for the Deckard and cannot wait to see what people get going on this thing. Now, let's move on to the next piece of news, as while Valve is building a Linux powerhouse, the war for the standalone market is heating up. Following Meta's retreat from the third-party hardware, Google has officially picked up as the champion. Google has announced a multi-year extension to its partnership with Xreal, positioning them as the lead hardware partner for Android XR ecosystem. This is regarding Project Aura, the headset that we saw recently. We now have more specs, as it apparently has a 70 degrees field of view, uses a Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2, and offloads its computing to a puck which a lot of people are actually gonna be happy about, apparently. Interestingly, the puck looks like a smartphone, but doesn't have a screen. The entire surface is a trackpad for mouse-like input. Now that, that is a useful use of a puck. I mean, imagine it just essentially being a trackpad, but looking like a phone. That's pretty cool. You could probably also put a camera on it as well. And yeah, actually, that's pretty dumb. You already have cameras on your face and then just add more cameras to the puck. But yeah, now with Meta out of the game, you know, retreating away from their open Horizon OS ecosystem, Xreal is basically becoming the pixel of the AR glasses world. Quite interesting. Now, another little something that Meta is apparently retreating from, but not on their own um, accord, is selling Meta Ray-Ban display glasses in the EU. Now, theoretically, we didn't have a release date for these in the EU. And as a lot of you know, probably from our previous videos, these are being sold in limited quantities, or at least Meta doesn't seem to have enough components in order to build enough of them. Essentially, demand is higher than what they can produce. First off, the good news, as the neural band features are rolling out. If you are in the US, you are getting the handwriting recognition feature. This lets you write messages on any table or surface with your finger, and the wristband decodes the neural signals to type text. It sounds sci-fi, but it's really cool, and this is actually, I believe, the feature people were most excited about during Meta's event when we saw the neural wristband. Well, that feature is just coming out now, but hey, at least it's coming out. Now for the bad news. If you live in the UK, France, Italy, or Canada, you're going to have to wait. Meta has officially delayed the international rollout of the Meta Ray-Ban display glasses and neural band to 2026. Now, it wouldn't be an AR and VR news video without some sort of chaos in the high-end headset market. Well, that's what we have here. First off, Pimax. They have begun shipping their dream headset in small batches, but there's a catch, as the official headstrap isn't actually ready, so they're shipping these out with a temporary headstrap. I don't have one of these in my hands, but it seems the thing is so tiny that this temporary headstrap might not actually be as terrible as it sounds. It's basically a fabric strap. They promise the proper 3D hard strap will ship later. Now, it might seem a bit amateurish to ship a high-end headset with a strap like this, but I do understand that Pimax wants to get these headsets out. And I believe once people try it on and see those 13.6 megapixel micro OLED panels, 
they might just be able to forgive the temporary head strap. That or they'll start manufacturing their own. Second, Shiftel. Remember Megan X? Well, Panasonic has officially ended its collaboration with Shiftel. Shiftel has been sold off and is now an independent company. Despite this breakup, they are launching the Megan X 8K Mark II. It's a 90Hz micro OLED headset that uses SteamVR tracking. It's good to see they survived the corporate split, but the high end market is still looking like it's quite fragmented. It's essentially a bunch of different companies companies doing a bunch of different things. No one has yet entirely decided whether they want to go standalone, use Steam VR tracking, or what they're doing. I mean, even the Valve frame has moved away from base station tracking, and yet other headsets are continuing to utilize the technology. Not that that's a bad thing, it's still the most accurate kind of tracking that we have, but it's just funny how the actual creators of said tracking have moved away from it, and other companies are continuing to use it. Now, onto some quest leaks. It wouldn't be a news video without some quest leaks. First off, surface typing. Meta is working on a feature that projects a virtual keyboard onto your real world desk. You can calibrate the position, and hand tracking detects your key presses on the physical surface. This sounds way better than air typing. Secondly, code suggests that remote desktop for PC streaming and HDMI link for capture cards are becoming combined into a singular app flow. Pretty cool. Luna on X has also found references to a fit adjustment feature for a device codenamed Phoenix, likely the next high-end quest. It suggests the headset will be able to tell if you're wearing it correctly, similar to the Vision Pro. Honestly, probably the handiest feature out of all of them, if it works well, as quite a few people have issues putting on the headset correctly and adjusting it. Whether it's IPD, or whether it's the actual way the headset is sitting on your face, every time someone new puts on a device, I have to explain to them how to wear it. It's a feature that would come in super handy for something like that, and could potentially make uh, first encounters a lot better. Let me know down below if you got that reference. And finally, we've got uh, VR chat beating records during the new year, as apparently they've started off 2026 with a bang. On New Year's Eve, they set a new concurrent user count of nearly 150 thousand people online at once. This proves that despite what the naysayers are saying, social VR is growing fast. Now, yeah, there's gonna be debate about that one in the comment section. And for the hardware modders, if you love the comfort of the Apple Vision Pro but prefer the OS of the Quest, you're in luck, as apparently a new mod has been seen online. People have been doing this for a while now, but this one popped up on my feed, and people are modding the Apple Vision Pro dual knit band onto the Quest. So in case that's an aesthetic you enjoy, uh, yeah, you can totally do that now. Whatever works, and whatever is most comfortable. After all, all we want to do is wear the thing for as long as possible without it hurting our faces. But anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you are in the world. If you like this one, please do even like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. Make sure to check out the second channel video down below if you guys are into tech and hacking. Now, again, it is auto-dubbed in English, so my voice is going to sound super weird, but in case you're Polish, hopefully you can uh, enjoy my voice in Polish. And I will make sure to do my very best to get the actual dub out ASAP. Anyway, thank you so much to everyone supporting the channel, whether you're a Patreon, whether you buy me a coffee, whether you're supporting through Super Chats or anything like that, or whether you're just watching. Seriously, much love, you are what makes all of this possible. And as usual, if you want to be notified of our content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you in the next video. Peace. I mamy odpalone światła. I dzięki temu, jak mamy ustalone MQTT, jesteśmy w stanie wybierać jasność, tak jakbyśmy mieli na normalnej żarówce, plus mamy cały color wheel, czyli że możemy też ustawiać jakikolwiek kolor chcemy. No ale oczywiście echo nie jest najlepszym światłem ambientowym, no bo jest w miarę małe, więc mamy tutaj też kilka efektów, które wbudowałem, ale wy możecie to rozbudować. Tak jak na przykład...